glasses. Your glasses. I'll get the dog. What the hell? What the hell? Welcome back, Mr. Torn. What happened to me? You've been in a coma, I'm afraid. Coma? 16 days. Yeah, 16 long, scary days, man. Pulse is good. Let's check your heart. You got a good friend in Mr. McManus here. He's been around almost the entire time. Forget it. I'm just lucky I'm between films. Heart's good. I can't feel my leg. There was some nerve damage. Now that you're conscious, we'll be able to run some tests and then we'll know what's what. All right? It's nice to have you back, Mr. Torn. Jeez, man. You've only been awake five minutes already. The chicks are after you. You know what? I bet she's been giving you long sponge baths this whole time. <laughs> Dieter, what happened? How'd I get here? I don't know, man. I was having a brainstorm in the car that night. I called your cell. You didn't pick up. I was nearby, so I stopped over. Your door was open, and you're lying at the bottom of the stairs. That's all I know, man. Well, everything else is normal. We've done what we can for the leg. It may rehabilitate to normal. There's no guarantee. Nerve damage is unforgiving. But what about his memory loss? Time will tell. The human mind is a tricky thing, and I don't like to play with it. There are others that do, though, and sometimes they can help. I'll try to find you someone. Okay. I just don't believe that I can't remember anything. It's like my mind's a blank page. Well, do you want me to stop? No, go on. Well, we wrapped the butcher man, and uh, distribution looks pretty good, so we'll see. What was I working on? <laughs> I don't know, man. You got a little uh, reclusive there for a while, but you know, you get like that when you're working on revisions. I just figured that's what you were up to. I hate revisions. And maybe this wasn't such a good idea. You want to stay in my place? I mean, it's always good to have a plan B. No. No, I'm gonna be fine. It's good. Thank you. Hey, that's what best friends are for, right? Yeah. <laughs> hey, Dieter. Yeah. When I was in the hospital, did she, uh, did she come by or anything? I'm sorry, man. No. That's all right. Look, are you sure you're gonna be all right? Yeah, I'm fine. Because I could get that nurse to come back, give you that sponge bath. Get out of here. <laughs>
I really appreciate this, Dieter. Hey, no problem, man. I never use the place. You know what? My dad actually willed it to me. He's always trying to turn me into some kind of outdoorsman or something. You don't seem the type. Oh, hell no. I'll die a city boy. Yeah, me too. Okay? Yes, mother. This is nice. Yeah, I guess. No, it's really nice, man. Cool, phone's working. Well, you know, we don't get any cell phone signal up here, so um, I let the doctor know uh, your number, so uh, if he finds a memory expert or something like that, but aside from that, you're all on your own, so uh, relax, walk around naked, fuck the deer, whatever. You got deer? Yeah, well, you know, they come out mainly at night. They used to spook me as a kid. Yeah, until you started to see him as sexual prey. <laughs> Dude, I never fucked a deer. Poked a pumpkin once. Nice. I'll go get the groceries. All right, you got your food, you got uh, clothes, you got your laptop. Anything else? No, I'm good. All right, call me if you need me. I'm only a couple hours away, okay? I will. Thank you. Sure. Oh, um, come up on Saturday. Take your shopping again, all right? I'll have cabin fever by then. Not funny. staring at a blank page. What? I said I hate staring at a blank page. Huh. Here. There. It's not blank anymore. You better run. <laughs> Dear. Hello? Mr. Tor? My name is Allie Morris. Dr. Myers gave me your number. He suggested I call you. I'm an amnesia specialist. Have you always been so strong-willed? What do you mean by that? Well, with a cane, you really only have use of one good hand. Yet you refuse quite adamantly to let me help you with the tea. You're the guest. But you're the patient. What's wrong? I'm not quite sure I'm ready for this. What are you afraid of, Mr. Torn? 
Oh, I don't mean to sound ominous. It's just that if I were missing a few months of my life, I'd want to do anything I could to get them back. I'm not so sure they were happy times. Why is that? I was going through a separation. Oh. That explains a lot. It does? Yeah. Separations, divorces, any relationship struggle of that caliber can create some pretty ugly scenes. Maybe your desire to forget is a lot stronger than you think. But isn't not knowing worse? My blend of psychiatry and hypnotherapy has helped a lot of people recover lost memories. I think it can help you too, if you'd like. Yeah, okay. Good. I'm gonna give you a little something to relax. Helps with the hypnosis process. I'm not so good with needles. That's all right. Just look out at the meadow. Cute place. Has it been in your family long? It's not mine. It belongs to a friend. Wow, that's nice. Some friend. Yeah, he's great. Hey, I didn't even feel that. Sometimes you do, sometimes you don't. So tell me, what do you enjoy doing to relax? Mm, I like to write. Something less active. Read? What do you like to read? Anything. Mostly fiction. Do your eyes get tired? Sometimes, yeah. Are they tired now? A little. Why don't you take off your glasses and close your eyes? How does that feel? Good. I want you to take a deep breath in and let it out. Good. I want to try a few exercises and see how you react, OK? OK. I want you to imagine you're standing at the top of a carpeted and very sturdy staircase. Now what I want you to do is prepare to go down those stairs very slowly, one step at a time. And with each step, you will feel more and more relaxed. Are you ready? Yes. Then take that first step. You should feel more relaxed, more comfortable, completely at ease. You are so relaxed you could almost melt down the stairs. You take another step. You're even more relaxed. The tension you carry in your body every day is lifting and dissipating. You feel light and tranquil. You take another step. You're more at peace than you've ever been. Completely relaxed, completely at ease. You take another step. You realize by the time you reach the bottom, you'll be completely asleep, safe and sound. You take another step. You will take that last step on the count of three, and you'll be safe and deeply, deeply asleep. One. Two, three. How do you feel? Good. Are you ready to remember? Yes. OK, let's start with something easy. Tell me about Christmas, say, two years ago. Nobody goes Caroline anymore. I miss that. CCK has so many kids in it, I want to scream. Well, you chose that project over mine. You knew Candy Cane Killer would have a lot of kids. I know, but they just don't get killed off fast enough. You know, you have absolutely no maternal instinct at all. <laughs> I married you, didn't I? <laughs> you better run. All right, let's move forward. Why don't you tell me about the first time you and Kat discussed splitting up? Are you serious? Are you surprised? Surprised is hardly the word. Jeez. 
Graf, we haven't been getting along for quite some time now. I thought if we didn't work together, it would help. But it hasn't. Nothing helps. But you act like being married to me is torture. It is sometimes. You know, I don't understand you. People who love each other get along. They disagree, they fight, but they stay together. Who is he? Oh, Graf. I swear to God, if you're cheating on me, if you were turning our marriage into the saddest cliche in American life. Oh, God, stop! Don't make this harder than it has to be. Oh, think about your feelings. Great. What about mine? What about yours? How are you going to feel staying married to me knowing that I don't want to be married to you? Look, we've grown apart. People do that. Either we face it and move on, or we live begrudgingly and miserable. Is that what you want? I, I've got to get to the studio. I'll see about getting a lawyer. I'm not giving you a divorce. I'm not asking. Bitch. All right, Grafton, listen to me. You're far away from that now. It's far away in a safe place where you can see it but not feel the pain and that's where it'll stay. Do you understand me? Yes. Good. Okay, let's move to the end. What is the last thing you remember before waking up at the hospital? Fighting, screaming. Pat! 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 I'm not really sure. The last memory we're trying to access was just a fragment. It didn't make any sense. What was it? Oh, I have to digest and analyze before I can... Please tell me. It would be unprofessional of me to expose you to something that you're just not ready for. Not to mention unhealthy. You've got to trust me on that, okay? Well, that's enough for today. You respond really well to therapy. We should make terrific progress but I do want you to get some rest. So that means no writing. I have to write, that's my therapy. Well, then stay away from the horror for a little while. Write a children's movie. <laughs> my agent would love that. Well, who are you here for? Your agent? No, but... Uh... Exactly. I wouldn't want any visions of imaginary monsters and killers to get in the way of any honest memories. Okay. Well, I'll go over today's session, and then I'll call you in a few days to set up another session. Yeah, all right. I'll show myself to the door. Doctor's orders. Oh. I'm leaving you my card on the table.
There's nothing there. There's nothing there. Grafton? Over here. Jesus, are you all right? Yeah, I'm fine. Come on, come on, come on. Let's get you up. Oh, jeez. Oh. Uh, you in pain? No. Jeez, man, you scared me. I was out there knocking for a long time. I guess I was out. I guess. Grafton, are you sure you're okay? I don't know. I mean, I can't remember. Hey, what happened? No, buddy, I wasn't here. No, I, I mean, before I went in the hospital. You still don't remember? Maybe, I mean, just bits and pieces. Well, you know, maybe it's better that way. I need to know. Now, you tell me. Kat and I, did we get... I don't know. She moved out. You two were fighting about the divorce. You kind of lost it there, man. You... Started talking some crazy shit. I should have listened better. What did I say? Uh, you were accusing her of all kinds of crazy things. Like what? Grafton, you were in a really bad place, man. Come on, Dieter. What'd I say? You said she was playing cruel tricks on you. Moving stuff around. Like what? The noose, uh, the hatchet from the mine trap, even snuff. Snuff? Yeah. You called me one night and you said... What? You said that it wasn't Cat. You saw it move on its own. Who? Snuff, like the fucking demon dog got up and moved on its own. Graf, I told you right there and then it was time to see a doctor. I should have called one. I was stupid. And then the next thing I know, you're lying at the bottom of the stairs. Graf, you all right? Graf. My father went insane. I used to visit him in the hospital. It's horrible. I was only eight or nine, but I remember thinking I'd rather die than let that happen to me. I never told anybody about that. Except Kat. Look, it's all right, buddy. That's all in the past. Is it? Sure it is. But I'm bringing the supplies that I brought. Make us some breakfast, okay? Yeah. Had a session with a therapist. Oh, yeah? Dr. Ali Morris. Dr. Myers set her up. Oh, yeah, he said that he might. <laughs> she cute? You're pathetic. Oh, come on, man. The chicks always go for the weak and defenseless guys. In high school, I had this cast once. Total chick magnet. This was strictly professional. Yeah. So, what happened? We talked. She did some hypnotherapy. Did that work? I guess I was unconscious. I woke up from a nightmare. What about? I don't know. I can't remember. I had another one last night. It seemed so real. Well, what was it? It's not important. The point is, I was unconscious. And I'm wondering if that's what happened. When? Oh, well... Look, man, we may never know. Hey, how about I get some stuff, come back over, spend the night? 
It's too far for you. Thanks, Shell. Bullshit! I'm gonna bring over some weenies, some more beer, and some primo porn. Oh. How can I refuse primo porn? Cool. A lot of beer. Uh, beer is in the car. These are the movies. <laughs> What'd you do, bring your whole collection? Oh, yeah, pretty much. I mean, I just shoved everything in here. I'll get the beer in a minute. No, I'll help. Oh, no, no, no. You have to save your strength for Dina the Double Jointed Dominatrix. Dumped everything in here. What kind of a freak do you think I am? <sighs> Dina. <laughs> How does she do that? Oh, who cares, man? Pop it in. I'm gonna go to bed, though. Oh, well, maybe tomorrow. I'm kind of tired. Sure? Yeah. Good night, sweet thing. Mm. It's me. You were dreaming. You, you 
you were calling my name. That's some fucked up dream crap. Yeah, tell me about it. They keep coming and they keep getting worse. Maybe this wasn't such a good idea. Maybe we should have gone with plan B, you know? Stay a little closer to the hospital. Can't escape my imagination. So Dr. Morris is coming today. I'm gonna ask her to give me something to help me sleep so I don't dream. All right. Suit yourself. Tell you what, I'll leave you the movies. Bet some good porn will give you some good dreams. Well, dreams are funny things. Do you think unconsciously you might feel like with your convalescence you might be overburdening, Dieter? Well, no. I guess. So maybe in some small metaphoric way you feel like you're killing him. Well, he has gone out of his way to help me. Guilt is a very powerful thing, Mr. Torn. Shall we try to access some more memories? Maybe we'll get a bit more today. Maybe it'll help explain some of your dreams. Yeah, okay. Okay, working backwards. What's the first thing you remember before the fall? Or earlier in time a bit? Just a few minutes. Where are you? In a room. What room? The second bedroom. I'm locked in. Who's locked you in, Grafton? Snuff. Grafton. Captain, you're safe. I saw. I saw. What? What did you see? <gasps> what are you afraid of, Mr. Torn? He 
said that it wasn't a cat. You saw it move on its own. Who? Snuff, like the fucking demon dog got up and moved on its own. The human mind is a tricky thing. Everything's a fucking blank page. said that the horror genre has a bad rap. Why is that? Well, I mean, I think it's because people don't take it as seriously an art form as a drama. Um, I mean, look, a uh, war picture like Saving Private Ryan or Platoon can be as gory as all get out. Blood and body parts flying everywhere and it wins an Academy Award. But you let a horror film be bloody and the pundits will shake their heads and they'll poo-poo it as self-indulgent trash. But you have to admit, a lot of horror is trash. <laughs> well, so is some drama. <laughs> Fair enough. Okay, why don't you tell us what is it about the horror genre that attracts you? And, more specifically, where do all of your horrific ideas come from? It's just as much fun to be the person who's popping out and saying boo as it is to be the one getting scared. Uh, both make your heart race, both make you feel more alive. Mr. Philosophy. I just imagine scenes, and if something's scary, then I write it down. <clears throat> that almost sounds like a little bit like you're not in control all the time. <laughs> well, I think a good writer has to be in control of the actual writing, but when it comes to the ideas and where and how they come into your head, I think you really have to surrender control to the creative process. It's, it's, it's a mystery. So I guess at those times I am a little out of control, yeah. And you don't think putting all of those disturbing images in our heads is a bad thing? No, it's, it's entertainment. I don't think anybody mistakes the artifice of a horror film for reality. Well, we'll take that up after the break. You're watching Grafton Torn, creator of The Mind Trap.
Fuck off, Bambi. Dieter. Hey, no, I'm, I'm fine. Look, what kind of axe does your dad have? Wait, wait, what, what, what the what? Axe. Do the axe in the shed, what kind? No, I don't remember any axe. I mean, I told you, I never really spent that much time up there. So it's, it's okay. Graf. Graf. Hey, uh, Dieter, they, they need the arm. <sighs> Mr. Torn, age markings on trees is not really my expertise. Well, just look. The short marks, they're old and weathered. But these long ones, they're fresh, like they were made recently. I heard somebody chopping wood the other night. Well, who would be out here chopping wood except you? It wasn't me. All right, well, maybe you didn't see the lighter ones the first time. Come, just look at this. Look. What am I looking for? There was a different axe. It's... That axe was gone, and there was a big one there, like the Mind Trap axe. The Mind Trap? Yeah, it's one of my films. So what you're saying is an axe from one of your films was in place instead of this axe? Yes! Mr. Trump, why don't we go inside? No, but I'm not crazy. I didn't say that you were. No, but you don't believe me. Mr. Torn. Look, even if I dreamed or hallucinated the axe, the marks on that chopping block were real. You saw them. I understand, but Mr. Torn. Please, you gotta believe me. Mr. Torn. I think I should leave. Please, please don't. I'm sorry, but I just can't remain in a situation that can become violent. No. I'm not, I swear. How do you know that? What? What do you mean? All right. You've said that you remember things that seem to be moving on their own, right? Yeah. So what I'm beginning to wonder is that maybe part of your problem has to do with some sort of somnambulistic disorder. You think I'm sleepwalking? I think you may have some unusual case of narcolepsy coupled with some very vivid dreams. And you can't tell whether you're awake or not and what images are real and what aren't. And if you're unconsciously mobile during these episodes, you're probably moving things around in your sleep. You think it's from the fall, or is it something I've had? It's hard to tell at this point. What do we do? Well, let's try to get a clear picture of what happened before the fall. Okay. All right, Crafton. What do you see? That's nice. Break the furniture. You're lucky I don't break you. Oh, please, big man. Give it your best shot. <sighs> right. That's what I thought. Gutless to the core. You know, I used to think you were so sensitive. But you're just a wimp. You shut up. A boring, impotent wimp. Shut up! Make me. You are so hateful. And you're spineless. Okay, let that memory go. What happened the last time you saw her? Where's my knife? You're not serious. Case is empty, knife is gone. What the hell am I supposed to think? Look, 
I only have a couple weeks to collect my things. I can't have you accusing me of stealing everything you can't find. Jimmy, you made the deal. You knew you got none of the movie memorabilia and the least you could do is uphold your end of the bargain. I'm not listening to any of this insanity. I'll have you sent to prison. You're crazy. Did you find the knife? Yes. give you a little something that should help keep you relaxed throughout the evening and tonight. It will help you sleep soundly with no dreams. When you wake in the morning, you'll feel very relaxed and very refreshed. And you'll remember everything we've discussed today. Do you understand? Yes. All right, Grafton. When you wake now on the count of three, you'll be at peace and you'll be happy to let me go. You'll have no anxiety at all. Are you ready? Yes. One, two, three. If you're unconsciously mobile during these episodes, 
unconsciously mope, or unconsciously mope, or unconsciously mope, or unconsciously mope. No, I didn't do that. I didn't kill her. Damn it, I didn't kill anybody. Motherfucker! shit out of me what are you doing here you sounded weird on the phone yesterday we were shooting all night and as soon as we finished i came over when you didn't answer the door i thought you had fallen down again or something i don't know i let myself in are you all right no i'm not all right i'm gonna make us some coffee thinking if this weren't actually happening to me, I'd make a pretty good movie. What would? My dreams. My past mixed with my movies. She got a writer all alone in a cabin haunted by his own past. It's a pretty good concept for a script. Yeah, it looks that way. Huh? I think you should go back to the hospital. Why? Why? Because this... This isn't healthy. Yeah, it is. I'm remembering things. I can see that. This script that you're writing? About you and Kat? What? 
Is it the truth or are you trying to come up with new memories to replace the ones that you lost? What the hell are you talking about? This man, what what is this? I didn't write this. I didn't write this. It's Dr. Morris. She's been taping our sessions. I bet she knows my screenplay software. She's been messing with me. Don't you see? Huh? She faked her own death. She's been switching out the axes. Been her all along. Grafton. Dr. Morse. Hypnotherapist, my ass. Graf, buddy, I called the hospital. They never heard of her. What are you talking about? After you called yesterday, I got word. I made a couple of calls. One was to Dr. Myers to get Dr. Morris's phone number. He had no idea who I was talking about. One of the nurses must have set it up. He checked with the nurses. None of them ever heard of Dr. Allie Morris. It could have been a nurse who wasn't on duty. Graf, they checked the computer. There is no Dr. Allie Morris listed. Hit Redial. She's the last number I called. See, I'm not making her up. Go on. What? Graf. What can I do? You tell me what you want to do. I'll help you do it. You want to go back to the hospital? You want to stay here? What do you want to do? Just tell me. I want to know what happened. I mean, you keep telling me that I fell down the stairs, but I keep seeing Cat. What? I see Cat at the bottom of the stairs, and it seems really real. She wasn't there, was she? No. I can't keep anything straight anymore, man. I, I, I don't even know when I'm awake and when I'm dreaming. Look, maybe I just need more time. Maybe, yeah. Uh... Look, do you want to come back to town with me? Or you want me to stay over? Well, no, you, you got a film going on. Hey, what's more important? I don't deserve you. Shut up. No, you go. I'll be fine. You've done enough already. Besides, if I can't handle a few nightmares, then maybe I should just kill myself. I got an idea. My daddy used to have all these uh, back and hip problems. He took this stuff regularly. Uh, kept a drawer. Oh. What? You know about this. Jesus fucking crazy old man. This is the stuff. It's uh, some sort of muscle relaxant, painkiller. No, look, it made him real sleepy, so take it if you want. You can't sleep. Thanks. Are you sure you're going to be all right? We can always go with plan B. I'm fine. I'm going to go read the script I have apparently been writing in my sleep. Well, you know, if that's really the case, you could be writing twice as many scripts as everyone else. Say good night, Dieter. Good night, Dieter.
did I write this? It's all from Cat's point of view. If I wrote it in my sleep, what is my subconscious trying to tell me? You idiot. Haven't you figured it out yet? How'd you get in here? I've been in here all along. The question is, how do you get out? What are you talking about? Dr. Morris is my doctor. I was having blackouts and it was finally discovered that I had a split personality. A lazy, angry, introverted side that comes out when I'm under stress. That's you. That's why you can't remember half your life, because that's when I'm in charge. And Dr. Morris is helping me to make that permanent, to get rid of you completely. Oh, we tried to scare you away. Now, it's time for plan B. And I think I'm really going to enjoy this. Die. Die. No more of that shit. <sighs> Dieter? Graph? Hi, Graph. Is it really you? Yeah. Is this a bad time? I'm not sure. You're going to invite me in? Come in. Dieter called and asked me to come see you. How are you? I... Okay. Well, then I guess I wasted a trip for nothing. I'm not okay. I'm going through a lot. That's what Dieter said. What'd he tell you? Well, after he called me a bitch for not visiting you in the hospital, he said I could make up for it by helping you to regain your memory. You have amnesia or something? Yeah. You want to sit down? I should apologize for not visiting you in the hospital after the coma. But things between us had been so, well, you know. Oh, I'm sorry. That was so stupid. What do you know? I remember bits and pieces, but it doesn't make much sense. Didn't make much sense back then either. I guess neither one of us was in the best place. You know what I want to remember the most? What happened the night I fell? You don't remember falling? No. And it almost seems like somebody doesn't want me to remember. Is that crazy? Maybe it's you. Maybe you don't want to remember. I mean, people do that, don't they? I guess. And you've always been hyper-creative. It was great when it was all focused on your work, but then it started to seep into our lives and... What do you mean? You really don't remember, do you? No. You started making some of the craziest accusations. I hit this, I moved that. I thought you were just making it all up to pick fights because of the divorce. You're so full of anger. That's why I didn't come visit you in the hospital. I didn't think you wanted me there. Kat, what happened? Graf, 
I really want to help you, but I wasn't there. Yes, you were. I saw you. I think you're confusing a comatose dream for a legitimate memory. It seems so real. What do you think happened? I have an image in my mind of you lying at the bottom of the stairs. Oh, God. Is that why you're torturing yourself? I don't know. Did you think you killed me? Like you killed your hypnotherapist? What did you say? What? What did you just say? Uh, I said, did you think you killed me? No, after that. What did you say? Nothing. I didn't say anything. Liar. Crap, calm down. I am not going to sit here and let you start that crap all over again. For me? Yes, you. All those crazy accusations. I said this, I said that, I moved this, I moved that. Please, get a grip on reality. You need help. Don't you remember? That's how we left it. I was begging you to get help. Remember? No. Oh, Graf. I want you to be okay. We've had our bad time, but it's over now. So let it go. Let me go. You don't have to kill me off. You can just let me walk away. I'm the strong one, remember? I can take care of myself. You just need to take care of you. Okay? Okay. All right. I'm going to go now. Give me a hug. Are you gonna be okay? Yeah, sure. Okay. I'll let myself out. What are you doing here? I thought about it. All your bad dreams and stuff that happen at night, right? So I thought I should be here to wake you up. Or knock you down. Whatever you need. You're terrific. Yeah, I know. Hey, thanks. Yeah, you're welcome. No, I mean, thank you for care. Cat? Yeah, she just left. She told me to ask her to come. It was really thoughtful of you. I think it was helpful too. Healing. Seeing her was great. Stop it. No, having her come by was great. Stop it! What's wrong with you? God, I've been trying so hard, man. Tito, what's wrong? I didn't want you to know. I thought it would help. What? Cat's dead. What? That's not possible. I was there. That night. I saw it. called me. You sounded really strange. You begged me to come over. I asked why, and you told me. Cat was dead. I came as fast as I could. 
when I got there, the door was already open. And, and you were both lying there at the foot of the stairs. She was dead, Graf. I'm sorry. You were still alive. I, I had to think fast. I, I didn't know what happened, but I wasn't going to let you get jailed in a murder rap or manslaughter, whatever. I called 911. Then I dragged Kat's body and put it in a closet. Later, when everyone was gone, I put her in the trunk of my car. I took her to the only place I could think of where no one else would go. Where? Here. What? In the meadow. Why'd you do it? Why? Because I love you, man. We've been friends forever. Way before Cat ever came along. Look, I know you don't want to hear this, but she was using you, man. She used you to get where she got, and then when you weren't any more used to her, she dumped you. And then she was trying to get you blackballed from ever working again? No wonder you... I'm, I'm sorry, man. I, it was an accident, I know. You just fell. I wish I'd done it. What? I wish I'd killed myself. Graf, don't say that. No, it's true. Maybe I killed her, and maybe I didn't, but either way, she's dead. I'm stuck here all alone with a bum leg, bad nightmares, and I don't even know if I'm awake or asleep half the time. I don't want to live like this. Graf, buddy. No. Not me. I don't want to end up in the nut house like my dad. Graf, you're not going to. I'll take a gun, and I'll end it. I'll do it, Dieter. I'll take that gun and I'll end it right now. Graf! It's over, okay? You, you guys just gotta get better. No, it's not over. It's not over because Kat was here. And I know she was here, and you know she was here, Graf. and I know what she is! God damn it, she is dead! Do you want me to get the papers to talk about her missing? You want me to lay all that out for you so you can be even more miserable than you already are? You're walking without your cane. Took some of those pills. I guess they're working. Well, there you go. Maybe some things can't get back to normal. Shh. You hear that? Hear what? That's the sound I'm talking about. Listen. What sound? Shh. I, I don't hear it. Shh. Shh. You heard that? Come on, you had to hear that. Grafton. There's somebody out there. All right. I'm gonna go check it out. You to wait. Grafton, if it's all in your mind, it can't hurt me, right? I suppose. Yes. All right. I'll be fine. There's still some uh, flashlights in here, right? Yeah. Wait. I don't know about that. Hey, take Shut it. Up. I don't even know if there's any bullets in it. Oh, I don't know, man. It does make me nervous. There it is again. All right. I'll go check it out. Just stay here. Stay calm. Stay here. Stay here. Stay here. Stay calm. Stay calm. Stay calm. Stay calm.
Dinner. Well, of course it worked. I knew it would. We got him to kill himself once. I knew we could do it again. Deanne's hallucinatory drug sure did help. Shame we had to kill her. Well, she played her part. We both agreed, no loose ends. <laughs> More for us. Oh, how ironic. Grafton made me beneficiary <laughs> without realizing I was the one you left him for. <gasps> Lucky for us. I couldn't do it. I didn't bang my fist down, my finger pulled the trigger. That's a good thing. I wouldn't have known the truth about you, too. So now you know. What are you gonna do now? Shoot us? Well, you said yourself. Nobody ever knows what goes on out here. That's how you two got away with it. So I guess nobody's gonna know when I blow your heads off. Graf, buddy. Grafton. <laughs> You don't think we'd give you a gun loaded with real bullets, did you? We figured that if you just took the pills, you'd kill yourself and make it easy on all of us. But then we figured we'd get your fingerprints on a gun, shoot you, make it look like a suicide. <laughs> time for plan C. Don't waste our time, Grafton. You got a bum right, buddy! Just like one of our movies! <laughs> There's nothing in that shed bigger than this axe, Grafton! I'm sorry it has to end like this, Grafton. Come on out, 
Grafton. There's nowhere to go. Everything. It's over. It's over. No, it isn't. Or so I thought. Madness. It took all of this for me to learn the truth. Now I stare at this blank, clean emptiness, and I see its power. It calms me. It comforts me. It's my salvation. For in it, I am free. And one day, some other way, I will be free again. <laughs> <laughs> 